So the burning question on everyone's mind when you watch these RV vlogs is, how does a person afford to live and go traveling all the time in an RV? Today we're gonna answer that question for you and, spoiler alert, we don't just afford to do it, we actually bring in quite a bit of income doing it. Yeah. And it's not how you might think. It has nothing to do with affiliate marketing, MLMs, or any of that type of thing. Um, check it out. When I wake up in the morning, drinking coffee on my balcony, trees are dancing to the whistle of the wind. Lord, I'm thankful for everything. When it's dark, light my way. Bless my heart, Lord, bless my day. I had a hard time, but you've always been around. Please don't leave me, Lord, stay around. So today we're trying something completely new, which is what we're calling Coffee Talk. And the idea here is, is that we wanna be able to share with you information that we've learned, strategies that we've approached to adventure outside the lines in our own life, and to get to know you better and for you to get to know us better. So between our adventure episodes, we're gonna be interjecting some of these informational ones to answer some of the burning questions that we know you have. Top of the list, how do you afford to do this? Yep, so today we are bringing you five ways that we make this possible and our main goal in all of this. So first up is work. How do you work if you're in the RV full time, part of the time, months at a time? And we'll get into what does that mean a little bit later about full time, part of the time. Amanda is a stay at home mom and I work full time, but my job is remote, which means if there's internet, I can work, which is great because nowadays there's internet on your cell phone through your data provider. All we have to do is make sure that wherever we're staying, we've got decent quality of service signal. Well, real quick, we had to go get August because he was fussing, he was sitting over there on the couch. He did not want to be left out of the video. So Augie Bear, as we like to call him, has now joined us for this, this clip. Okay. So number two. We did not get rid of our home. Nope, we kept it. And that was really important to us. We kind of were not willing to honestly get rid of a home and just move into an RV. You know, financially, the decision is you don't want to invest in something that's going down in value over time, like an RV or a tiny home or something that's probably not appreciating. And your house is the biggest investment you probably have. So for us, the financial decision to make this work, I didn't want to compromise the uh, financial future of my family by not having a home base for many reasons, whether it be financial, like I just described, or the ability to remain in community, to have a place to come home to that's, that's your space, that's your place, that's grounded, uh, roots with families, opportunities to have holidays and celebrations. There's tons of reasons to have a home. And uh, what we're here to share with you is you can do this without giving up all of those things. You just have to figure out uh, what works for you, what the cards are in your deck, and yeah. how to make it work. The reason why we started this, honestly, was because when I was pregnant with Athen, I was working at a bank as a teller, and I was on maternity leave after having Athen, knowing that I was going back to work. I get a text message from my boss that I need to come back at 30 hours a week instead of 20, which meant that now the kids are gonna be going to daycare, and that meant I actually had to go back at 40 hours a week to pay for it. Yeah, we just couldn't <laughs> juggle both of us working, having kids uh, at, that, at those number of hours a week. So we were put in a conundrum. We had to choose, are we going to go to work closer to full time, basically to pay for daycare, or are we gonna downsize our house potentially so that Amanda can stay home and we can have a single income? And Amanda chose to stay, stay home, home with, the, with kids the kids and give up the dual income. Now that forced us to cinch our belt up a little bit and get creative. And the way we chose to do this is point number three, short-term rentals. For us, this was the option that made the most sense. We could actually short-term rent our home out via Airbnb, VRBO, home away from home, whatever provider you want to use. Uh, they offer this service online where people can come and rent out your house for a weekend or a week, and then they're gone. And the great thing about this is people don't settle in like they would if it was a long-term rental. 
Long-term rentals, you got all the risks of you know people getting comfortable and kind of starting to abuse the place. Not to mention, they generally want long-term, which is six months to a year or more, and you're under a contract, you're kind of forced out of your house for that period of time. And you have to actually move out. Not what we wanted to do. So with a short-term rental situation, you've got the ability to keep your stuff, furnishings and, and such, in your home. You can come back whenever you want because you choose when the bookings happen and when they don't. Uh, you can turn them down if you don't want to. You can block off dates. So it gave us tremendous flexibility. And the major thing is, is you're actually able to make far more income doing that than you would if it was a long-term rental. So that is how we made over $8,000 this last semester. Semester, what am I in school? <laughs> this last semester, this last season, uh, while going on vacation, enjoying the sites, sharing with you the videos and episodes, continuing to work. And really the only impact uh, on our budget with RV Living was lodging and fuel expenses that increased. Yeah. Everything else stays pretty much the same. Which brings us to point number four. Why did we choose an RV? While we started doing our short-term rentals, we decided that we were gonna go stay with family. And that meant that every weekend we were basically packing up and driving somewhere to someone's house and staying there. It quickly became completely unmanageable and unrealistic. But we didn't want to dive off head first into committing to an RV payment or doing something of that nature without really knowing whether this whole thing was actually going to flow. You know, we really couldn't afford to add another expense to our monthly budget uh, unless we could justify it by increasing the income as well. Right. And so originally, after we did decide to go ahead and start looking at RVs, we were looking at the like really small, tiny ones and because we didn't have a car that was going to pull it and the idea was just somewhere to stay that would be our space for the weekend. And uh, the more we looked, the idea came that we would actually be living in this thing so it needed to be somewhat of a house. Mm. First of all, I couldn't believe how affordable the RVs actually were. The payment was, what do we pay, like 220 a month. It's not that big considering uh, the comparison to you know, the home mortgage, which is almost 10 times that amount. So mm. unbelievable shift in cost. So when you can get your mortgage covered by the uh, short-term rentals, and then you have the trade-off is, is that you're staying in the RV and you're able to have nearly a factor of 10 difference in price point, that really changes the cash flow scenario and makes it all possible. So our first season, we didn't actually record and we just learned the ropes about living in an RV and what that looked like. We were actually coming back in between the bookings, moving in and out of the house a bunch. And so for this season that you guys are watching right now, which we're calling season one, we actually decided we are moving out of the house moving out, I mean like all of our personal stuff, obviously furniture was staying here. Mm. And we lived in the RV part time for of the year. And that full meant- Full time, part of the time. Right. So the idea is, is that we live full time at home for several months out of the year. And then there's a transition day where the home is available for bookings and we move into the RV. We don't technically move everything out. We leave all of our major furnishings. We lock some stuff up in closets. You know, after season zero, as we call it, we learned that we can minimize a lot of things. There's a major purge. And actually, after coming home after this season, we've thought, man, there's a, even more we could purge. Mm -hmm. uh, but that transition, setting those hard, hard lines to say, okay, out of the house, in the RV, out of the RV, back in the house, huge huge beneficial strategy for that. So, uh, but this brings us down to point number five that we're gonna be talking about, which is a strict budget. Making sure that you're doing a zero-based budget every month. There's a great tool called uh, Every Dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an app you can get on your phone. You can both see where you're at for the month. So rather than looking at your bank account and saying, I've got this much money left, I'm good to spend, because that enables your impulse buying. And then at the end of the month, you're like, where did all the money go? I've got nothing left. It's far better to go through and allocate money at the beginning of the month to each category that you know and plan you're gonna spend for, and then you can be on the same page all the way throughout the month. Now, we don't always do it well, because sometimes things come up, sometimes we get really ran down and emotionally unstable and we wanna go out and eat, and it's just crazy and we blow a certain budget. The great thing is, is at least now we've got some boundaries so that when we blow that budget, we know, hey, we blew the budget. So we're not just running wild and, and spending like crazy and going more into debt and it's just ridiculous. 
And, you know, when we move into the RV, it just becomes our budget, like, that we have at home is the budget in the RV. Yeah. The only expenses, like Nolan talked about earlier, is the fact that now we are, you know, looking at campgrounds and gas. Yeah. And so, as we're planning our trips, we take those into consideration and say, like, okay, how much are we going to try to budget towards those? And, you know, this past season, we stayed at a ton of state parks because they are cheap. And yeah. You really <laughs> just... Look at a strategy of not traveling as far as fast and you reduce your gas budget. Mm -hmm. Look at staying in places or boondocking that, that don't cost you anything to stay at and you can reduce your overall expenditures. You know, if you're looking at KOAs, chances are you're spending a lot per month because they're almost charging you hotel rates for the, for the amenities they have. Um, so you just have to find the right mix for you to keep those costs low. Um, and that's the strategy that's worked for us. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been the top five ways we make this possible financially and the reasons we do what we do. Yep. Uh, up next, we're gonna be sharing with you an episode from Houston Space Center. Super Woo! excited to do that one. We had a great time there. So check in next week as Saturday Subscribe night. Subscribe and like below. Subscribe and like below. And we're gonna be launching a new website here soon. Uh, more about that coming out. A I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. No, I don't want you going. It's not done yet. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, look for that coming out soon. We're going to have a mailing list that you can join. We're thinking about doing a giveaway, which is going to be super exciting. Um, yeah, I've got all kinds of ideas to share with you, but not yet. Just be patient. They're coming soon. So, check you later. See you then. Bye.